Welcome back AP Calculus students. We're now going to take a look at our third example, which uses this idea of the exponential growth and decay model. But in this particular case, we're going to throw a few wrinkles into the scenario to get you thinking a little bit. And we're going to introduce a problem about a very unfortunate graduate student at a research lab in a university. So let's take a look here. What we've got in our example three is that an absent-minded graduate student at a lab happened to be studying a population of fruit flies. She is working under the premise that the experimental population of fruit flies increases according to the law of exponential growth, and that's not too far-fetched. That would likely be the case. She counts 100 flies after the second day of the experiment. And then she counts 300 flies after the fourth day of the experiment and all of the breeding that had been happened. However, she forgot to record the number of fruit flies at the very beginning of the experiment. And her professor who's uh, guiding her through this project is going to want this information. And he's going to need this all written up. And she's very panicky because she needs to figure out how many flies were in that original population so that my work can thus be complete. So let's take a look at how we're going to bail out our absent-minded graduate student. Well, because we know that we're working under the premise that the fruit flies increase according to the law of exponential growth, that is just another phrase that says we can use our good friend y equal c e to the k t, or y equal kect. Now, as I work through story problems, I like to substitute y out and use the amount of the item, in this case, the number of flies, at time t. So I have this as my jumping off point. And so what we have to do is we have to find the value of C and K at some point. Well, therein lies a bit of our problem. Because if you recall from the previous video, we outlined the fact that the C value is the initial amount. In other words, when time is 0, you can't get more initial than that e to the 0 is 1, so c would be the amount. But she didn't know this amount. And so we have to use what's given to us, like the fact that she counted 100 flies after the second day. So you have to know that time would be 2 in that case, and the amount of flies would be 100, or a of 2 is 100. Now, if you plug those in, you're going to find out that it's not going to help you find either C or K for that matter. It's going to give you an expression, an equation rather, that has both C and K in it still. But you might be able to shove that off to the side and do something with that here in a moment. Because if you continue to read through the problem, it mentions that she did her job and counted the number of flies after the fourth day. So when time is four, the number of flies is up to 300. And so we could plug those into this very same equation, and we get something that looks pretty similar, albeit still with a C and a K. Now, if the juices are flowing, you probably can realize that you can solve this system of equations simultaneously. And that's where we're going to go with this next. You're going to take essentially 100 equals CE to the 2K, along with the 300 equals CE to the 4K. And we're going to solve this. And a system of equations is typically denoted with this nice little brace that kind of groups them together that says, hey, we want you to solve. And so lots of different ways you can solve. What I think might be best is to perhaps solve for C in each of the two equations. You would just divide both sides by e to the 2k. And in the case of this version, we'll divide both sides by e to the 4k. And then 
as you can see, if both of these expressions are equivalent to C, that means that these two expressions are indeed equivalent to one another. And we are now off to the races to solve for what would be K. So interestingly, you're going to probably find K first with this approach. So if we divide both sides by, oh, just doesn't matter how you want to do this, I suppose. If I divide both sides by 300, I would get 1 third. If I divide both sides by e to the 2k, now think about this, you would have e to the 4k divided by e to the 2k. That means you can subtract the exponents and make that your power of your base e. Now I will take the natural log of both sides as typical to get the k by itself. And we know that this ln of e is going to soon become a 1 uh, when this, whoops, that should be a 2k, my apologies. When this 2k pops out to the front, this ln of e is going to disappear on us. And so we have natural log of 1 third is 2 times k, which then means that k is going to be 1 half times the natural log of 1 third. Again, we don't want to round our, L, our k um, if we can avoid it, we're going to be as accurate as we possibly can, and we're going to go uh, from here. So from here, we are then going to go ahead and set these two C's equivalent to one another. And so we would have an equation that looks a little bit like this. Okay, we're going to have to cross multiply it looks like. So 100 times e to the 4k would equal 300 times e to the 2k. And at this point, we could divide both sides by 100 and divide both sides by e to the 2k. I want to set that up over here on the left side, if you don't mind, because the 4k and the 2k will subtract from each other. We would get e to the 2k equaling 3 at which point I'm going to use the space up here. We're going to take the natural log of both sides of that equation. And sure enough, the 2k comes out in front. The ln of e disappears, becomes 1. And so k would be 1 half natural log of 3. We don't want to decimalize that if we can absolutely avoid it. And we can. I think we can continue to work with our a of t equation uh, in a little bit more accuracy if we use that particular k. And so we have a of t equaling c times e to the 1 half natural log of 3 multiplied by t power. Now, we can simplify this a little bit here fairly uh, fairly easily, I think, um, if we want to, to do that before we plug in our zero. It, it, I guess in large part, it probably doesn't matter. But to get the practice in, as we did in the last video, we notice that this t is multiplied by the 1 half. So essentially, we have t over 2 that can become the exponent of the 3, at which point the e and the ln can completely cancel. And we have 3 raised to the t over 2 power, which honestly is the way that you would more likely encounter these growth equations when you're working in your science classes. They like to do away with those natural logs. Now, we have yet to find our c, which is what the goal of this problem is. Essentially, we're looking for what is C uh, when, when the, the, I'm sorry, what is the value of the number of flies when time is zero? And so if we plug zero in for T, we end up with C equaling three, whoops, we get C times three, I should say, to the zero over two power. Well, three to the zero we know is one. And so that means that C is equivalent to our A of zero, like, like we already knew, right? But what we're going to have to do with this is develop um, a way to find this 
uh, exact value of c. And if you're wondering, well, how are we going to do that? Well, we actually have a choice. You've got two different versions of this c here that you can use from your previous work. And keep in mind the fact that you know the value of k. So you could have actually done this immediately. As soon as you solved for this k, you could have plugged it into either one of those. So it's just one of those things where you just make your decision. Um, I am going to say, oh, let's use the top one here. So c is just simply 100 divided by e to the 2 times our k is 1 half ln of 3. So you can see that the 2 and the 1 half will cancel. And you have 100 over e to the ln of 3, which the e and the ln will go away. And you have 100 over 3. OK, what if we decided to go the other route? You don't probably need to document this in your notes. But just to show you, it's all good. We'll get the same answer. If you plug in that value of k, 1 half ln of 3 down here, 300 over e to the 2 ln of 3, a little bit trickier because that 2 has to land in the exponent position of that 3, 3 squared, which is 9, in order for the e and the ln to reduce. And hopefully you see that those are equivalent fractions. And furthermore, if you have to round this to the nearest fruit fly, this is really 33.3 .3 repeating flies, which rounded would, I suppose, be 33 flies. And therefore, our absent-minded graduate student can predict that that's what she initially had before the breeding had begun, and thus appease her professor and have a good report. So yep, just another example of how you can use the idea of kect to answer some real-world problems. We've got a few more still ahead of you here. I think each one gets, at least in my opinion, a little bit more interesting, and we hope that you tune in for those. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.